<laughs> That's the worst advice they never got. Bad advice is plastered all over YouTube. And in this video, I'm gonna react and give some two cents on some of the bad advice that is out there based on a post I made in a couple different Facebook groups and people shared with me their bad advice. And I'm gonna read them right now live and react. If you haven't seen part one of this, I'm gonna link you to that at the end of this video. Before we get into it, drop me a comment. Let me know what the worst advice is you've got and I'll make another reaction video with the comments down below. Let's jump into them though. Gaming videos do well. That's hilarious. Um, you know, it just depends. Some gaming videos are gonna do well and some don't. Someone actually replied and said mine do. So again, it just shows you like the quality of content you put out, your personality, how you present, how you optimize, like all those things. Just because you put videos out don't mean they're gonna do well. That's Yeah, that's terrible advice. It's, it's about what you do with those videos. Next one, just keep trying and you'll like it. Advice given when I said I had done face cam and commentary for 70 odd videos and that I've stopped because I hate it. What, I'm confused, just keep trying trying and you like it. Yeah, okay, so that's probably a personal problem. <laughs> like it sounds like the, the, the videos that you're making you don't like, the topic that they're about probably. So that's probably why you didn't start liking it. And I could see why some people like, maybe YouTube isn't for everyone as far as like, they don't like the production, the editing, all that. Then yeah, maybe you shouldn't be doing YouTube. I think a lot of it though, you do kind of grow a little bit more of a like for it, but I don't know. I, I, I think it sounds like maybe there was just a little bit of a, like she got sick of what she was doing. You know, things got stale and she needed to do something different to keep things interesting. Next one, it's easy. Just pop a video and wait. You need to go viral. Your content isn't what people, and so this is all from one person. You need to go viral. Your content isn't what people are looking for. Just do something stupid and film it. <laughs> well, okay. On the first thing, it's easy. Just pop a video and wait. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. I, I tell you that guys all, all the time you know, it's worth it and it can be easier if you're doing things right, you know, putting out quality content, optimizing all those things. But yeah, it, it takes time, right? I always say one video a week for a year and then decide if it's something you wanna continue with. Even then, maybe continue with it, but shift gears or look at what you've had success with. You need to go viral your cut yet. So yeah, like I, here's, I have a uh, different advice on this though, as far as going viral. Like you shouldn't like base your whole channel strategy on just trying to do stupid stuff and trying to go viral. But at the same time, like, Every now and then, don't be afraid to make a video with the intention of just see if you can get it to go a little more viral. Especially if you build like a subscriber base and you do something that's a little bit, you know, unexpected. They might really resonate with that. And now that video could get maybe, you know, not viral views, but more views than what you typically get. So eh, my two cents on that, but yeah, that should not be an entire channel strategy whatsoever. Do something that you can rely on. Search engine optimization, suggested engine optimization. Things like that. Quantity over quality. Yeah. And then he says, I think that takes the fun out of making videos and ultimately we result in making videos that you aren't proud of. Sure, you'll gain subs, but longevity is more important in my opinion. And I agree. You know, quantity is somewhat important. Like again, I, I always say about one video a week, but at the same time, if your videos, number one, if you're not putting out quality videos, your audience isn't gonna like them, but he's saying it more like from the perspective of like, what, what you're getting out of it. And I agree, like if you're putting out videos that you're not proud of, you're not having fun making, like at the end of the day, what are you doing this for, right? And at the end of the day, you're gonna get bored and sick of making videos and burn out and then you won't wanna do it anymore. So yeah, you gotta like the content that you're making, be passionate about the, the topics and then also the production side of things, like do something different, shake things up, try to do something cool, new, unique, interesting. That's why I'm doing these reaction videos. So I figured this would be something different. Okay, do it for the money, once again. Comes back to what we just talked about. Like, if you're doing it for the money, you're not doing it for your passion. So, the money, like, is a great, like, side benefit, a great second reason, and, and actually, I would say in a way, yeah, do it for the money, but base it off of something you love. Like, do it for the money you can make doing something you love. Don't just do it for the dollars and cents. Like, figure out what's my passion, make videos about that, and then know that, okay, if I do things right, I can make money from it, but don't do it for the sole reason of the money. I agree. I once read an article when I first started on YouTube that said sub for sub was a good way to grow your subscribers. <laughs> yeah, like you might get subscribers for a little bit, but then they'll probably go away because they're fake accounts or what, just don't, 
you're gonna get terrible views on your videos. Like, it's the worst thing you could do. Do not do sub for sub. You're gonna ruin your channel doing that. Even if you get like a lot of subscribers, it's dead weight, basically. It's just people that are subscribed to your channel that don't really care about your videos. That's not what you want. Okay, let's read this one. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at this reply. PewDiePie, I didn't know this. PewDiePie did sub for sub in his early days. That's crazy. So back in the day, you know, that probably worked a little bit more, but, and also consider this, like the reason that might work for a channel like PewDiePie is because he has more of like a broad appeal type channel. It's more entertainment that pretty much anyone could get into, right? So in that instance, I could see how it could maybe help a little more. I'm not saying to do that if you have more of like a broad based channel, but it just shows you also how like YouTube has changed over the years. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that though. Next one, pretty much almost every piece of advice or suggestion I've ever received, almost. I can write a book on bad YouTube advice I've been given. So that tells me you're getting advice from a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about. And again, like there's a lot of comments here of showing that it's rampant on the internet, which comes back to the fact that you need to find the right people, the right places, the right groups, the right channels <laughs> to get your advice from. So you know that what you're getting for your advice is going to help. Also keep this in mind, like even like the advice I give, like on my channel, like just because you're taking my advice doesn't mean your channel is gonna like blow up instantly. Like it's a process, right? It's, you, if you're putting strategies in place so to more reliably get those views and build your channel subscriber base and views and all that stuff, but it doesn't happen overnight. So I think some people might think they're getting bad advice just because they're not instantly blowing up. That's just not the way YouTube works. I mean, you have the chance to, like I say sometimes on this channel, like my wife's first video right now, I think it's about a year old, 300,000 views. Her first video, it's insane. But I wouldn't make it like that your goal. Like that's like an outlier. That's not gonna happen for everybody. For making a comedy video, you need a girl at least, which is absolutely idiotic. All is about content who makes or who acts doesn't matter. Yeah, like you don't need a girl in your video. Like what does that even mean? I guess this video is not gonna do well because there's no girl in it. But yeah, I, I agree with that one too. Like it, it doesn't matter. Good content is good content. It doesn't matter if there's a girl in it, especially if it's a comedy video, like you can make a good comedy video with guys. I think this video is pretty funny. It's parts of it anyway. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a girl, so hopefully you don't leave this video instantly. Next one, ignoring the dislikes. Yeah, don't do that. Within reason, there's certain videos, like if there's a little bit of a controversy, like I know like I made a video like on Marvel versus DC and people might like, since there's controversy, people might not agree with your opinion they might dislike or if you did like a movie review or I had one video on my Get Handles basketball channel talking about the James Hedder hard and step back and if it's a travel or not. And according to the NBA rules as interpreted, a lot of the times when it looks like a travel, it isn't, sometimes he does travel, but like that got a lot of dislikes. So I think in some ways like, yeah, there's this, like you can kind of ignore the dislikes, but if you're making more like content to just help people or entertain them and you're getting a lot of dislikes, that might be a signal that you need to change gears a little bit and change your content a little bit. Yeah, take it, always take it with a grain of salt, you know, whatever you're doing. Dislikes can matter, but you know, and, and I think you should be looking at them as an indicator. Maybe your videos aren't good, but it doesn't always necessarily mean that you're making bad videos. It just depends on the video. Okay, the next one says, I don't think I've had bad advice. Okay, that's good. Good for you. I'm not sure why they commented on the post, but you need specialized equipment to actually start a YouTube channel. Yes, this is a great comment. I'm gonna read the rest though. You don't actually need specialized equipment. I would have been uploading much more when I made my channel if I realized that. Yes, I know channels, my wife's channel, she started with using a lot of just uh, her iPhone. I know another channel that is just about to 2 million subscribers. They started like for the first year with an iPhone. And like, we're talking like five years ago. So an old generation iPhone. Yeah, it's, it's not about the crazy equipment. It can help, you know, improve the quality of the video. I think getting good audio is important because if people can't understand what you're saying and clearly hear you, then that is a problem, but you don't need special equipment. You, you just, and even if you're using a phone and like for the audio, just come closer to the phone, come closer to your camera, right? Whatever it is that you got, you don't need expensive equipment. Get shout outs from a big YouTuber. I don't think that's bad advice. I don't think it's realistic necessarily though. Like 
getting a shout out from a big YouTuber, like, I guess in that sense, it's not necessarily bad advice. Like if you try and like to, your whole strategy is just to get a shout out from a big YouTuber, then yeah, that's probably not gonna happen. I mean, if you know your way around like getting to know people and getting in contact with people, then you might be able to do it. But at the end of the day, I don't think, and even then, that's just gonna give you a little surge, right? You get one shout out, you might get a little surge of views and subscribers that can help get you some traction, but I don't think that's a good long-term strategy. So I guess it's not terrible advice, but it's not like good advice to like have as your foundation but it's not good advice to have as your foundation for your channel. Next one, on one of my videos about a year after I started making microwave science videos. That's interesting, I don't even know what microwave science means completely. Someone told me to make all of my videos 20 seconds or less. How are you gonna make a, like if I don't even know what that is, I don't know, I can't imagine you could make a video 20 seconds or less. So anyways, they said, told me to make all my videos 20 seconds or less and just show the big finale where the big thing happens. None of the setup or that, Yeah, that is terrible advice. First of all, how can you make a quality video on microwave science? Second of all, just showing the big thing that happens without the lead up makes like the big thing that happens not as exciting. And third, you're killing watch time on your channel. Like if you, if, if like, that's the thing. A lot of thing, people will comment, like make your videos shorter because they want to get to like the big point. The thing is, if you just give them the big point without the lead up, number one, it doesn't like sink in as much. So it's like a psychological thing. But on top of that, you're killing your watch time. And, and if they really want to see that big thing at the end, guess what they're going to do? They're going to watch the whole video to see when that big thing happens and you're going to get more watch time. Now I'm not saying to just drag it out and drag it out and drag it out. There's got to be like, you know, good entertainment and information leading up to it. But yeah, he's right. Make the video longer, show, you know, the process that leads up to the big finale or whatever, and you'll get better watch time, better video, better, you know, engagement from people they'll be more bought into the big thing like on multiple levels it's it's uh good to have the video longer and then he said although not advice i got but someone making a youtube advice video it wasn't too bad until the end mostly full of inconception misconceptions like telling people you need an expensive camera the end she actually told people to do sub for sub for their first year. Yeah, bad advice, bad advice. You don't need an expensive camera. Again, you don't need to do sub for sub. Next one, all the uploads that say get 100,000 subs with this. Anything in that upload is the worst advice. Yeah, there's a lot of videos like that. I think some of them do have some good little tactics and strategies that you can get, but a lot of them are kind of like relying on more like spammy type ways of growing subscribers, you know, get them especially like when, when they're saying how to get that like in one day or one week. A lot of those, like I've watched a lot of them and there's a couple little strategies and things you can maybe learn from, but the, a lot of them is like, you know, spamming your links and trying to like bait people into subscribing to your channel or reward them for subscribing. And at the end of the day, they're subscribing just because of the reward, not because of your actual videos. And that leads to them not watching your videos. Yeah, and just a lot of those videos in general, it has some kind of, eh, I don't know if I would do those types of tactics. Upload five times a day. Yeah, that's, that's, just don't do it. Unless you're like, there's certain channels that it makes sense, but most channels, I don't think it's really the way to go. You don't need to put in that much time and effort to grow your channel and you're probably putting on poor quality videos and just, yeah, there's very few channels where I think people really want to see five videos a day from you. That's just me. Use Promolta. Oh my God, why was I ever so stupid? I don't even know what Promolta is, but it sounds like something where you probably, I've, I've seen apps where like if you subscribe to like 10 people in a day, then you get like coins and then they'll subscribe back to you. I used to do stuff like that with like Twitter and stuff. Yeah, I made all of these mistakes back when I was getting started. But, um, you know, don't do it. You're, you're getting, again, low quality subscribers, viewers, all that. Sub for sub, yep, we talked about this. If you lost motivation, just quit. YouTube is not for you. This is a good one. I like this one a lot because if you lose motivation, I in very few instances, maybe it makes sense to quit. Like if the, the whole basis of what the channel is about, you just have no passion for. But I think there is a way around that. Changing gears a little bit, like maybe changing, doing a completely different production style of how you film and edit your videos or changing the, the, the subjects that you're talking about, finding new, new unique angles, new things to talk about or to show if you're doing more entertainment type videos. 
I think if you do that, then you will keep your motivation because there's something new, interesting, exciting. You're growing as a human being, as a creator, right? I think if you do that, then motivation will not go away. You'll be interested. And on top of that, like your subscribers will appreciate it because you're doing something new, fresh to keep them interested. So I agree with that one. Good one. I get a lot of people telling me to make popular characters, characters that I'd never be able to get the rights to use licensing a lot of people don't understand copyright yeah i get this on um some of my like get, get handles basketball people saying can you show footage of the nba players and i know i've seen other channels do this i don't do it because i've had i tried this back in the day for a couple videos and they got content id'd so basically i couldn't make money on them ad revenue which really to me is like whatever as long as it's a good video but at the same time like that tells me like youtube's keeping tabs on that and with like article 13 coming now and stuff like there's a good chance that if you're doing that your channel could get shut down and if you're putting that much time into building a channel do you really want to get shut down and like me like i'm building entire businesses off of it do you really want to get your channel shut down over that so I agree, don't use copyrighted stuff. It's not worth it. Jennifer Moore, gonna have a collaboration with her on the channel coming soon, or maybe already is out. She's got XTV producer and the sewing report. She says, because I'm the traditional TV, in the traditional TV industry circles, I'll often get friendly advice from people who have no experience with YouTube telling me videos are too long. The average length of a television piece is one minutes and 30 seconds. Interesting. When I first started out, I was making videos between two to three minutes long based on what I always knew. Never take YouTube specific advice from anyone who isn't actively part of the community. Great advice, Jennifer. And I say this a lot, make longer videos. Typically you're gonna see better performance on those videos. I try to get my videos close to about 10 minutes with good quality content, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little shorter, but that's usually about the baseline. Um, and if it's not there, I'm gonna try to get it there by not just you know dragging on but giving more quality information throughout the video and you know if you're doing an entertainment thing you know type of a channel make it entertaining to the end and figure out ways to make it a little longer that way but yeah you can get a lot of advice from people that have you know they're just casual like they don't understand necessarily how the algorithm works or you know anything with how youtube works in general and so they're gonna base what you should do on YouTube off of something completely else and they're not always necessarily right. I would get your advice from people that know what they're talking about. Gear doesn't matter. It is common advice from people having good gear. I disagree on that. I use gear and I, in fact, for, for a long time, I had a really old camcorder that I used and I still use it on some of my Get Handles Basketball YouTube channel. It's not a super expensive uh, camcorder. It's like a camcorder, not a DSLR. Um, and I know channels that have blown up using YouTube. So I disagree with that one. I think gear, yeah, and then someone said gear is extremely overrated. Um, extremely, and then, okay, well, let's continue with their conversation. Extremely overrated by some and extremely underrated by others. It is a tool, but the tool matters. Shooting with a Samsung and NX500 and tell me gear doesn't matter. It matters to some degree. Good point. Then, yeah, if you have decent gear, it doesn't matter that much what you have it should be decent yeah i agree i mean you got to be able to at least see a certain amount of clarity i think your audio does matter in fact i know your audio matters if you're not being clear with your audio and people can't clearly hear what you're saying that is important um but you don't necessarily need gear to do that you could just get closer to your camera that'll make it clear because you're speaking more directly into the microphone but at the end of the day yeah i i think you can get by with a lot of like, even like four generations old, like iPhones and Samsung Galaxies and things like that, you know, and, and what's happening in the video is what really matters. So I think gear is overrated overall, but it's gotta be up to a certain level of quality. You're not going to make it on YouTube. That's terrible advice. Like you don't, how does anyone know that? Why would you say that? That's just me. I think that's just me. So, that's all I'm gonna say about that one. Don't don't listen to the people that are haters. I'll also say that. Very few channels actually make money on YouTube. Ah, the mixed bag on this one. Most channels are not gonna make a lot of money on ad revenue. You've gotta have a lot of subscribers, a lot of, or, or I shouldn't say subscribers, a lot of views, quality views, 
to make a good amount of money from ad revenue on YouTube. So that part I would say that is kind of like not bad advice, you know, in a way. But that being said, if you build an actual business and like I always talk about on Inspired, sell digital products, services, or offer some side of, sort of a product or service, you know, so you're not just relying on ad revenue, then you can make really good money from YouTube, but like really good money without needing lots and lots and lots of views. Um, but that being said, I don't think a lot of channels are gonna like make, I shouldn't say a lot, there's a lot of channels probably making a full-time income on YouTube, but there's also a lot more that are not making a full-time income if they're just relying on ad revenue. If you also have a business built around it, you don't need to be even close to full-time income from the ad revenue. But yeah, like most channels are not gonna, at least not in the next, you know, like in the first year, gonna make a full-time income from just the ad revenue for sure. Even maybe two, three years. Like, Get Handles Basketball, I've got 440,000 subscribers at the time of filming this, 445,000. Get, getting about half a million to a million views every month. And that would just barely, now every niche is a little bit different with the amount you're gonna make based on your views, but that would just barely allow me to eat by on that revenue, the ad revenue I make. So that should show you like you, you know, need a lot, a lot, a lot of views to make a full-time income. And again, every niche is different. Like my niche is actually probably one of the lower ad revenues per thousand views. So something to keep in mind. YouTube, you should make videos for Vimeo. That's where the real money's at. That's an awesome comment. Uh, Vimeo, I don't even know much about Vimeo besides, I, I use it for like my digital products and services and things like that, but I've never really went on the platform looking to like make money from it. So I don't know, I can't really comment on if it's got good revenue or not, but I know that you have probably a much better chance with YouTube of growing a big audience that you can build a business around, which to me, that's where the real, real money is at. So on that tangent, I would say, Probably bad advice, but there might be an opportunity. I don't know. I'd have to look more into Vimeo, maybe to like, if there's less competition to grow an audience a little quicker. But at the same time, like, if there's less competition, that means there's less people on the platform, so less potential to grow big. That it doesn't work. Yeah, well, YouTube doesn't work for a lot of people, so it's kind of good advice, but it does work. It, it does work. If you're consistent, staying with it long term, all the stuff that we've been talking about. Buy subscribers, yeah, we talked about this. this. is like buying subscribers is probably one step below sub for sub. Like sub for sub's bad. Buying subscribers is worse. Like if you buy subscribers, you could potentially get your channel shut down. Yes, for real. And even if you don't get your channel shut down, you're getting a lot of people watching your videos that don't really, well, they're probably not even watching your videos. You just bought subscribers that, probably aren't even real human beings, and if they are, they don't care about your channel. So that's really, really, really bad. It's a waste of time. Start a YouTube channel. <laughs> that's the worst advice they'd ever got. Sounds like somebody is is a little uh, frustrated with the grind. It does take time, right? It, it does take energy and effort, but I think long-term, like anyone that sticks with it long-term, enough to the point where they get to the point where they can make full-time income. And again, you can do that much quicker. In fact, a link down below how to go full-time on YouTube much quicker, a, a YouTube video I have on that. But I think if you're doing that, like it's definitely worth it and you can get to that point much more quickly. But if you're just starting a YouTube channel and expecting to get big quick, not gonna happen, probably. Never know. And if you're looking to make full-time income off of ad revenue, it's gonna take a really long time to do that. So things that you have to consider, you know, you gotta be willing to put in the time, what your channel should be a, is about, you should be passionate about it. If you're not, then yeah, you're, gonna be really frustrated and not happy with it. Don't do it or, but you don't know how to edit. Great advice, like great bad advice. <laughs> yeah, like do it, do YouTube. Like again, I, I said in the previous videos, um, part one of this, which I'll link you to in a, in a little bit, but that it's, it's an investment. You know, you put your time into your videos and you can make money and add revenue on it over and over and over again. Send traffic to a website where you can sell products and services over and over and over again for putting in your time once. From that perspective, and then also, but you don't know how to edit. Like, I, I didn't know how to edit. When I got started on, uh, with editing, actually, I used two VCRs and was dubbing from one to another to make edits before YouTube was even out. That's how I learned. And when I first got on a computer, it was like so much easier. And even then, I didn't know how to edit. I self-taught myself. I didn't watch any tutorials or anything. I just pushed buttons and figured it out. Here I am today, 
got a video marketing business and a YouTube channel that also, you know, has got 440,000 subscribers and I didn't know how to edit. So like, that's just bad life advice. Like if you don't know how to do something, you shouldn't do it. Well, that doesn't make sense. You didn't know how to walk at one point. That didn't stop you from that or tie your shoes. Why would you let that stop you from getting a YouTube channel started or starting to learn how to edit? Next one, stop wasting your time on that stuff. It's not a waste of time. It's, it's a great use of your time as long as, again, you got the right mentality about it, you enjoy what you're doing, and you've got a, a plan, a strategy, and you look at it from the long-term perspective. So that's all the reactions. If you wanna watch part one, you could check that out here. Again, all some of those videos I mentioned throughout this video in the description and in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to catch the newest videos, and I'll see you in that video next.